ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to another edition of DIY Money. DIY Money. Hey, check us out on Insta, Twitter, Facebook, DIY Money Podcast. Real simple. Sometimes you have to put the at symbol, don't you? At DIY Money Podcast. Uh, the tribe is still rocking. I don't know what's happening. The tribe is getting like a dozen new members a day. Going exponential. Exponential. Parabolic. The tribe is a closed Facebook group. Uh, you can find us at the DIY Money Tribe. DIY Tribe. I don't know. Search it's not both. at DIY Money Podcast. Search both and see which comes up. Uh, in there, we uh, you know swap ideas, motivational stuff, uh, basically videos that I put up. Yep. And I obviously, guess. you know what the big topic of conversation this week was? I don't. Do you listen to the podcast at one and a half times speed? Really? The number of people that they have do? never tried. Well, now everybody. Really? Yeah, because they you had to give them that, you know, whatever. Now they're like, well, now I get through the episodes in half the time and they want more episodes. Great. We'll do twice as many a week. No, we no, we'll not. do one and a half times a oh, week. Oh, boy. Here we go. All right. Uh, last week or a couple days ago, we launched the DIY Money Junior. It's blowing up already. It is awesome. So awesome. So if you have a young person and you would like to send in a qu- have them send in a question, yep. send us a question, podcast at DIYmoney.org. Put in the subject line, DIY Money Junior. We will listen to the question. We will then, if we want to use the question on an upcoming DIY Money Junior, send you a legal doc giving us the permission to use the question on air. Mm -hmm. So you do have to get parents' permission. We have to get parents' permission. That's correct. And then if we use the question, we will give the young person a $25 gift certificate to stockpile.com to start their investment account. There you go. I love this. I am so excited about this. Anyways, but I'm also excited about our next question, which comes from Jeremy. (laughs) Jeremy, what do you got? Hey, guys. Big fan of the show. My name is Jeremy. I'm a physics student out of Virginia, and I've been binging the show ever since I found it a few weeks ago. I'm not quite caught up yet, though, so I hope my question hasn't already been asked. Um, But I'll go get right to it. Um, My question is really about broad investment strategies. Um, Given some of my skills with math, I am more inclined to start learning how to use math uh, to help understand the stock market, when to buy, when to sell. But uh, I've heard good arguments for uh, more psychological approaches based on what everyone else is saying and sort of just generally trying to understand what people will do at certain times. I've heard good arguments for both. Uh, and I thought I'd feel the question out to you guys so you can give me some input. Um, what do you think? Thanks so much. This is a fascinating question. I have a lot of different thoughts on this. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure which angle I really want to go. Hmm. So I'm going to just kind of spew it out there uh, in no particular order. The first thing I will say to you, Jeremy, is you should research a gentleman by the name of Jim Simmons. He is a mathematician. He founded a company called Renaissance Technologies. Renaissance Technologies is a massive hedge fund specializing in quantitative trading based on mathematical models. Okay. The performance until the last year or so, it's been a little rough, but the performance historically, astronomical. Like 40 plus percentage points annualized. For how long? 20 plus years. And now I think has one of the most unique fee structures. I think it's like 5% annual and a 40% profit fee or something like that. It's massive. Yeah. You can't get in. I mean, you can't get into this thing. But now they're struggling. They're last year, I think they're going through some struggles. But I've never, I just know about that. I, I researched it a little bit, et cetera. However, that's a fascinating area for you to, to look into. Look into his backstory that firm, et cetera. Quantitative trading, uh, which is the basis for what you'll hear out there called high-frequency trading, is one of, and I'm making this up, but I I can't imagine it's wrong, fastest-growing trading um, strategies or whatever the word I want to use on Wall Street. It is absolutely massive. When you read a report that J.P. Morgan was profitable 
364 of 365 days in their trading arm of their business. It isn't because really smart individuals are sitting here going, oh, I think XYZ goes up today or XYZ goes down today. It is all based on mathematical quantitative models. It is a field that is vast, and I strongly encourage you, if you are interested in it, to go down that path. I have a friend who has a uh, son who was just hired at a fund in Europe who is a, maybe not physics, but at least a math okay. major or something along those lines, in hired in a quantitative-based uh, hedge fund. So it's vast. I encourage you to look into it. However, one area that I want to caution you, and this is, this is if you don't go down this sort of quantitative model-type trading world, and this is for all of our listeners out there, some of the smartest individuals in the world are also some of the worst investors. And the reason is, when you apply intelligent logic to the stock market, it will often tell you to run and hide in a cave and stock up on spam. Because the reality is, often the market will move in manners that make absolutely zero sense intelligently. But here's what you have to understand, and I've explained this to so many people, usually it works best when you're in a crowded room, is when I speak to somebody who's very intelligent that tells me all the reasons why they don't want to invest in the stock market, I proceed to tell them the reason the markets keep going higher and higher and higher is because what you fail to realize is all of these people in here, in these rooms, right? Think of me in a crowded room. Are who are and who are buying and selling the stocks that you're looking at? It is not based on some intellectual sort of complex model. It's often based upon people going, "Oh, I'm working. I'm putting my paycheck into the stock market. I want to retire someday. Whatever. I don't care. Two weeks, boom, into the market, into the market, into the market. Or somebody going, "Well, I use Apple. I want to buy Apple for." They don't do any modeling. They don't do any quantitative analysis. They just go out and buy the stock. And so when we approach the markets with this sort of intelligent, like, oh, I need to understand why a stock goes up, why a stock goes down, why this, good luck. It ain't going to happen. You're not going to find some answer in that. Okay? So that's the second thing I would say that is very dangerous when you approach things from a very, very intelligent manner. The second, and it's fine to do, but it's only fine to do, in my opinion, in this last camp, which is to take this mathematical understanding and apply it to some sort of fundamental analysis to help you evaluate investments. And that's fine. I think that's wonderful, and I wish more people would do it. Now, you can go down a, a tremendous uh, amount of paths there, but I will share with you one of the best books I like for this, which is very simple, and it can give you an entrance into fundamental analysis, is a book called Buffettology by Mary Buffett, the daughter of, of one of the greatest investors of all time. And she outlines very well a basic strategy that Warren and, and Charlie Munger still use to this day to calculate how a company grows its book value. So again, number one, the quantitative investment world is massive. If you have interest in it, look far and wide. Maybe it's your next career. Number two, be very careful. If you don't go down that path, be very careful to try to figure out how the market works using your intelligence because it's dangerous. But number three, you could also use that mathematical analysis to start understanding fundamental analysis, which would help you a great deal in your investing. That was pretty comprehensive. Thank you. I like it. Yeah, I think if there's an area of investing that interests you, it is worth exploring if it's something you want to add to your life, like a hobby. Uh, that said, I think if you're looking at it from a financial planning perspective, it's important to have a bucket as well uh, that is just going to get, for lack of a better word, market returns, asset allocation, uh, set it, and don't mess it up. Because until you have a track record of knowing whether or not your algos or math or whatever it is work, 
uh, if you're putting all your eggs in that basket and it does not work out and you're basing it just on your intelligence and, and what you think you might be able to do, it's just a hypothesis at that point. And so until you have some level of assurance, uh, which very few things are assured in markets, uh, because even if you have the best math, best algorithms, whatever, uh, behavior and economics and the Federal Reserve and multiple factors, uh, if you read any perspectives, there's 20 different risk factors that can come out of nowhere uh, and affect all of your different calculations Only and 20? assumptions. Uh, lately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they added one definitely in oh, 2020. Okay. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, so there's maybe 21 now. But um, so anytime you get into that, I mean, there's just multiple things, like multiple ways that it can go wrong. So just keep that in mind. I would I would look at your overall financial plan. And if say you have a bucket for retirement, and this is this is what I do. I mean, I have an interest in investing markets. I like to look at uh, certain companies here and there, especially dividend paying companies, as we talked about before, and have a portion of our portfolio that invests in some of those. But for instance, our retirement account, uh, 401k, uh, Roth IRAs, et cetera, uh, they are invested in an asset allocated fashion. And I'm letting you know the broad investment universe do its job. They're diversified. They rebalance, et cetera. And I just have this bucket over here that that I can experiment with and and see. And if I don't beat the market, great. If I do beat the market, great. The point of it is not trying to beat the market. It's that I'm interested in analyzing this particular company and wanting to be an owner in that particular company and investing it. So if you want to be an investor in your own strategy, then take a portion and allocate to yourself as an investment manager, but don't over allocate what you would to any other investment manager that isn't yet proven or have a track record, I would say. I think math can be very, very helpful uh, in any investment strategy, financial planning. We mm -hmm. use it every day. Uh, it's helpful in fundamental analysis. It's helpful to guide you. But I think as you eloquently put in your, in your question, never forget you're dealing with human emotion. And Harry Markowitz uh, basically created the efficient market frontier, and his theory was that the market was efficient. Everything was priced in, and therefore there was no edge. There was no way to basically do any better than the market at any given time because the market was pricing in all information. So therefore, it was efficient. I actually have to teach that. I, I not teach that. I have to touch on that in my classes at the university. And then I proceed to say and show the number of instances throughout history, the most recent being March and April of 2020, mm -hmm. where the market was very, very far from efficient. In fact, in that brief moment in time, some of the best value presented itself that we have seen in many, many years. And the reason it presented itself at that moment in time is because investors taking all the information that they had about COVID and quarantines and so forth thought the world was literally going to end. So in my opinion, the market is very, very far from efficient in the very short periods or, or intermediate terms. And there's an opportunity there if you apply sound principles and discipline and fundamental analysis to do exceptionally well. But be very careful to think that you are going to always be outperforming or getting some sort of edge consistently when the reality is the market is a very inefficient, at times very wild environment that is impossible to predict. Impossible. That was good. We are on fire today. Fire. Not financial independence. Retire early. No. Financial awesomeness. Bah. Bar? Bah. Bah. Going off the rails. This uh, is not efficient. Let's wrap it up. All right. Check us out on all the social media platforms, DIY Money Podcast. And if you want to, if you're so inclined to join the tribe on Facebook, hit us up at the DIY Tribe. Remember, friends, the secret to wealth Pretty darn simple. Live on less than you make. Invest the rest and do so for a very long time. Make it a great one.